my lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are going to be responding to a big load of goddamn criticism that was fired at me and some other random guy named Vosh by the one and only amazing atheist, a.k.a. TJ Kirk, a.k.a. the LSD wizard, a.k.a. the Alabama Slamma. Um, that's what we're going to be doing right now. A video was made calling me out, and I want to see it, and I want to hear what TJ has to say. As many of you know, me and TJ have a, uh, a, a long and storied history in these spaces, and we tend to be on very good terms, and that remains the case. Um, I am, believe it or not, quite capable of taking criticism. But I'm interested to see what uh, TJ has to say, and more importantly, to share it all with you. So I want to hear what TJ has to say today, and we're going to watch that together and react to it. Um, I am also going to be going on TJ's show day after tomorrow, which is going to be very exciting because um, one of TJ's co-hosts, a guy by the name of Paul's Ego, is uh, wants to debate me and is fairly angry at me. So if you're watching this as a video segment, you're going to have to wait for the video segment to come up. But if you're watching this live, that's day after tomorrow. Friday is when I'll be going on uh, uh, to the show. Uh, Friday, the 26th of January. And it'll be uh, at our usual stream time. So no need to change your schedule or anything like that. Um... Yeah, I'm going to be debating Paul's ego. We're going to be debating about Trump and George Bush. So that should be very interesting. I don't know how it's going to go. I've heard that Paul's ego is quite frustrated with me. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yep, 5 p.m. PST is when we're planning on uh, going live. I will probably go live a little earlier than that just to warm up and make sure we got everything running properly. But, uh, but yeah. Anyway, without any further ado, let's jump right into this, shall we? I would, I would very much like to jump directly into this. Let me just get this video up here, and we'll, we'll listen to what TJ has to say. Um, let's see here. Here we go. TJ on Paul's Ego, Vosh, and Demon Mama. Without any further ado, let's go. Let's hear it. So do you hate... Demon Mama, are you an amazing atheist? I am. I am an atheist. It's true. I am not I am not the amazing atheist, but I like to think I'm a fairly amazing atheist. What's this say? TJ was showing a huge butt on screen for the length of time that this pick is up. It has been removed due to the fear of demonetization. He will appear on screen later in the video. If you would like to see said butt, join the Pessimist Productions Patreon. Link in the description. All right. Fa fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Hate Vosh now or nah? No, I love the way that he always figures out how to define the current argument. There's a big difference between someone who goes around participating in arguments and debates and someone who goes around setting those things. At the end of the day, Vosh is essentially a hot take machine that rapid fire shoots out hot takes. And because of that, he is constantly not just participating in the conversation. He is creating the conversation. And that's why he is at the level that he is. And I think that's very impressive. And I think he deserves massive props and accolades for that. I also think he's a very handsome guy. I personally find him to be handsome. I also think that he is very intelligent and very well-spoken. That being said, there are certain things that I take issue with. And when I take issue with them, I want to participate in that conversation. You know, if someone other than Vosh had said the stuff that Vosh said about drugs, it probably wouldn't have been worth my time to respond to. Ah. Because the context of some random idiot saying something idiotic is not fascinating. The concept of Vosh, an intelligent person, 
saying something that I find idiotic is far more fascinating to me. And so I, I, I not only have a great deal of admiration for Vosh, I also um, find him intellectually stimulating. I think it'd be very dishonest to say that I have any sort of animosity. That said, I do like to poke him sometimes. He's fun to poke. I do it with no animosity towards him. Don't you think that his arguments are stupid? He is creating a stupid conversation to have that is a really a waste of time conversation to have? No, because as much as I didn't agree with his, uh, his take on drugs, it's not like that take is exclusive to him. So if I'm going to respond to that argument, I'd rather respond to it from him than from someone who is just totally irredeemably stupid. Hey, if you like this clip, you Woo! might like the full Woo! Whoa! Woo! stream, which I do every Sunday, more or less, over on the Pessimist Productions Patreon, link down below. Thank you kindly. I got these messages uh, back to back almost this week. Vosh is covering those old Anita Sarkeesian vids right now, and I'm finding it hilarious that he's saying the same shit you were saying almost 10 years ago, just affirming that her takes were always cringe and dumb. And I said, lol, Vosh is just an amazing atheist rerun. Like the next- <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, that is so fucking funny. <laughs> Amazing atheist rerun. Oh, okay, that goes hard though. All right, that made me laugh. All right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I didn't see that. I don't. I don't know. I don't know about this, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's. I hope at this point that that people are able to sort of rationally. I mean, people have always been able to rationally. Some people, I should say, have always been able to rationally critique Anita Sarkeesian. Um, a lot of Anita Sarkeesian's, like, takes on video games are fairly shallow, in my opinion. And um, I don't think that they really do a great job of being, like, uh, you know, robust art critique. I think it was more like what, I, what Anita Sarkeesian was trying to do was get people thinking uh, about, uh, you know, p potential... Uh, you know, I mean, it's literally called Tropes Against ver Tropes versus Women in Video Gaming, I think was the original name of it. And and there are some, like, bad tropes in video games. And I think just getting people to think about that is fine, even if I don't think that all of her examples were all that good. Um, the way that people responded, obviously, to Anita Sarkeesian was deranged, completely and utterly deranged, actually insane. Uh, the fact that, like her saying some critical stuff about uh mario brothers triggered like the screeching panic of a century uh, uh it was it, i don't know it was it was i can't even i can't think of any other event really that had the same level of like pathetic response except like maybe events that were done by the same people in in the following years like we talked about this with my um star wars a uh, sequel trilogy review um where the 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 conversation but it was all the same people it was all the same people who were still screeching they didn't stop screeching since since uh they got mad at Anita Sarkeesian but i mean you just have to think about the level of fragility some random lady decides to say um yeah it's kind of weird that uh you know in a lot of video games women are treated like an achievement that you attain when, hey, you know, women are people and there's a lot of women who would like to play video games, but they don't feel that video games are like made to appeal to them in any way because in video games, or at least in a lot of video games, women are treated as objects to be one. That's kind of weird, right? And the response was just like, ah! you know, I don't know. That was, a. I don't know what Vosh said about him, but. I'm just happy. I'm happy that we're at the point in time where people can have reasonable pushback and there's not just like a, like the sound of like a thousand monkeys being thrown into a blender uh, every single time you so much as try to say anything about video games with regard to feminism or Anita Sarkeesian. Today, someone sent me, seen a bit of Vosh's stream yesterday. 
there was a bit where he was basically praised praised the old bustier Lara Croft over the later less busty version and saying it's sexist to reduce her tits in order to take her more seriously. He was basically making the same points you were in your Lara Croft video. And given how much hate he already gets, this is probably going to be batshit crazy. And then I laughed and said, Vosh is just an amazing atheist ripoff. So the thing about that is that um, I see a tremendous amount of similarities between myself and Vosh. And that's why when I see him giving an unnuanced take, there is an impulse in me. Sophie says a lot of her views kind of boil down to being sexy is bad. Um, I don't think she meant for it to be that way, but I... I do think that there is a certain way of interpreting some of what she said. And like I said, I don't think her, t her takes tended to go deep enough. Um, there was a problem, okay? And, and it hasn't completely gone away because it can't because this problem hasn't been solved um, societally. But uh, it's still present. But objectification of women in video games um, is really shocking. And in fact, it's funny because... Um, People get mad at Kojima for doing that, for having like highly sexualized female characters. Um, and usually it's because of a, they, they do that from a position of not being familiar with the rest of his stuff, which is that like all of his characters are insanely hypersexualized to an unbelievable degree. Um, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that uh, that we will get into over time. Basically, there's, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, but all of his characters are hypersexualized, um, and it's funny because like at the like that's fairly revolutionary for the time in gaming. In gaming, um, there was a very strict uh, difference between the portrayal of attractive men and the portrayal of attractive women in video games for a very long period of time, and I think that she touched on something correct. Um, on the surface level, but perhaps didn't go deep enough. I don't think that she really intended to say that, like, if you're sexy, if there's a sexy woman in a video game, it's bad. Just that, like, just that it's, it's own, like, women are seen as sex objects throughout, throughout a lot of gaming history. And it's really fucking bad. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you guys ever seen those old machinima specials? the really cringe ones that are now deleted, but you can still find re-uploads of on YouTube where they're like, they like the machinima they bring on, like they hire like exotic dancers and they're like, all right, gamers, time for our next review. Bring in the babes. And then they have like exotic dancers come out in skimpy clothing and holding little video game cards. And they're like, oh, they're like, wow, what a hot piece of ass. That's how much you're gonna wanna play this next video game. Like, that type of shit is like, whoo. And that was just everywhere on every level of gaming. So, yeah, I think she was touching on things that were valid to think about. The fact that, like, you know, in, in a video game, you'd have, like, this, this male character uh, who's, like, obviously, like, made to be attractive. But they're made to be attractive in a way of, like, the, the gamer wants to be this character and that male character will have like a super complex story, a, a, uh, a whole backstory. They'll be tragic. They'll have emotional stakes. They'll have ups and downs and all this shit. And they're also like a power fantasy in a lot of ways. And then the female character will basically be a broomstick with tits attached to it. And then that's what they, that's what you get for female representation is you get a, a, a character that has no depth, a character that is not given the room to be a character. You know, here's a, a perfect example of this is how few games actually have playable female main characters. It's still fairly rare. Obviously, there are a lot more games now, even AAA games that have playable female main characters, but it was literally uh, almost impossible to find. And there are games that did do it, but a lot of them didn't sell well because at the time gamers just literally wouldn't play a game that made them play as a female character who was a full character and wasn't just a piece of ass. It's pretty bad. It's, it's pretty bad.
But I, I, I do understand where the critique comes from because I, again, like I said, I think that a lot of the, the things that Anita Sarkeesian was saying at the time was fairly shallow. Anyway, let's continue. To almost try to slip into that fatherly role of being like, no, son, that's not how you do it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it would be weird. Okay. I can imagine that Vosh probably didn't, probably didn't take well to this. I didn't see Vosh's reaction to this. Um... I heard him mention in another thing, I popped into chat for a little bit and I heard him mention that uh, TJ did something condescending. I can imagine it was probably this right here. This type of thing right here. But I also, I wanna be charitable to TJ. Like TJ is a considerably older guy. And uh, so I can understand to a certain degree where he's coming from, but I could also, I, I can also imagine, like, not taking well. Like, I can't, I don't know. If I was in contention with, with you know, another creator and they did that, I would probably feel a little weird about it. So I can imagine that was a little bit, it, it, it just feels a little weird, right? It does feel a little condescending, I think. Weird and condescending for me to do that. Okay, well, but I think that impulse does Okay, so he acknowledged it. He acknowledges it anyway. Exist inside of me. Uh, because... You know, one of the things I always kick myself for is, you know, I don't necessarily disavow all of the stuff I said about feminism back in the day, but I disavow the unnuanced way that I treated all feminism as a monolith instead of yeah. engaging in yep. the more nuanced perspective that there are multiple kinds of feminism. There isn't feminism, all caps. There are feminisms lowercase and with a S at the end. So um, that's an important distinction that I should have made at the time. And I have no excuse for not making it at the time because I knew that then. I just didn't want to be nuanced on the topic. I just wanted to be like, yeah, feminists suck. <laughs> I think he's touching on something really good here. Um, he And also at the beginning of this video, he mentions like the hot take machine. Like he says, I think he says like, oh, you know, Vosh is kind of in this position of being a hot take machine. He says something like that. I don't know if that's his exact wording. Um, but I, I think that, I think there's a pressure for basically everyone doing almost any type of opinionated content, which is most content, but especially political content. There is a huge pressure to do that. There is a huge pressure to basically have a take on everything, regardless of how much you know about it and get it out the door when the topic is relevant and also uh, not take any ego hits by admitting that you were wrong about it um, ever. It's a, and I, I've talked about this, like the, the, the hot take economy type thing on, on social media where like there's this huge incentive of everyone to constantly be giving takes. And as a result, instead of people like being able to have conversations or, or, you know, state an opinion with the with an openness towards like growing from that position. There's always a need to drop your take, like you're um like you're filling in slots in like a I don't know in like a roster, like or a book. Like people can go through. What's your take on this? Ah, what's your take on this? Oh, what's your take on this? Ooh, I don't like that one. You know what I mean? Like you're they're like filling out a character sheet for you with hot takes, and I think there's a pressure for like t most content creators to to do that. And I think it's very hard to resist. And sometimes, even if you resist it, it still happens anyway. Um, but uh, I, but I also like, but I, I'm happy that he acknowledges here that that's like something that happens. That there's like a, uh, you know, that you can get yourself into a position of basically going, yeah, I know that it's more complicated than this, but I don't really have the time nor do I really care, nor is it necessarily good for my channel to, you know, have a nuanced position. I would rather just drop my hot take and then let people argue about it, which will generate free engagement. Um, it's toxic. It's a toxic thing. And I don't think anybody gets away from it, not even myself. And I tend to be somebody who's fairly paranoid about that. 
I tend to be really, really paranoid about under, like, under baking my opinions. You guys, I've talked about, you guys have listened to me talk about this, like, a hundred thousand times of me talking about how I feel like I constantly, um, while I'm streaming, I'm like, oh shit, am I saying this right? Am I saying this right? Oh wait, let me, let me clarify further. Let me clarify further. Oh, let me preamble more. You know, there's like this, it's like an anxiety that like hovers over you. Um, and I think part of that is because, like, I mean, uh, like, I I fear being hot taked in the wrong direction, which is something that has happened to me for most of my career as a streamer of people taking small segments of me explaining something and turning that into my take on the situation. It's happened like so many times and also just distorting it or sometimes completely making something up for what they think my hot take is or whatever. It's really hard. Uh, it's good to see him acknowledge this and bring attention to it because I do think it's something that's very hard to counter. But I feel you have to. If you don't, you become the darkest version of yourself and you also become a more shallow uh, showrunner. You become a more shallow commentator. Uh, if you always just fully, if you fully embrace the hot take economy, you will be at the whim of ultimately in the worst worst case you'll be at the at the whim of a, of an algorithm that will pr constantly pressure you to have an opinion that get, that maximizes your algorithmic engagement and that was a mistake and so i hate to see vosh engaging in some sort of topic with the same sort of disregard of nuance that I had because I was just addicted to being and feeling right. And that's the yeah. biggest problem I see with Vosh is that he's addicted, not to caffeine really, not even to Adderall. What he's really addicted to is that feeling of correctness. And you know. And that right there is what the hot take economy gives you. It's, um, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if I, I don't know if I a hundred percent, like, I don't know if I agree a hundred percent with, with this, like as a general statement on Vosh, but, um, I'll take it as a general, a, a general critique of political streamers as a whole. The, um, the, yeah, I just, I just hit you with my hot take and fuck you. All the haters are going to get mad about it, bro. But I just, I'm, I'm hitting you with the fucking truth. You may not like it, but that's the goddamn truth. Yeah, cope and seethe. Cope and motherfucking seethe. You know? Like that, like, how how often is that a thing? And to the degree that it gets not just, it, it's not just parodied, it but it's like, it's like brought, it's like parodied and then it comes back around to sometimes being a part of people's like repertoire. This whole thing of like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna drop a hot take and anybody who disagrees with me is a fucking hater. You know, it's that it's like it does It gives you this idea that you're like you're the truth. You're the one and only truth speaker out there um, Yeah So I don't know I think this is a problem again. I don't know how much like I Don't know. I'm not I'm not super I, I did this video to see the criticisms of me not to 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 you know Go through the criticisms of Vosh, but I think it's something that most talking heads on the internet uh, grapple with. And I do think that you can get yourself worked into a corner with it, where basically you spend a lot of your time like saying things that you want, that you know will provoke a reaction because it will let you feel like, you know, you have, you're the, you have the platform. So at the end of the day, you're going to be the one who's right because you're going to have the final say and you can choose to just not engage with criticism if you want to, because you're saying it from a platform. If that makes any sense. Self-opinionated? I've never heard that term, I don't think, but yeah. It's a wonderful feeling. It's an intoxicating feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. But at the end of the day, every man, every woman, every person should always be open to the very real possibility that what they're saying is fucking wrong. True. And when you lose True. the ability to do that, that doesn't enhance you as a person. It diminishes you as a person. And I hate to see him diminish himself by becoming hopelessly addicted to the ether of being right.
or feeling right. You mellow with age, perhaps he will too. Yeah, I'm just trying to help him along, but it's probably unwelcome and unwanted. I mean, Paul and Vosh have a lot in common too. I mean, you see Vosh berating his chat as a bunch of idiots just for asking follow-up questions to things he said, which is a total Paul move. Both Paul and Vosh think that their every prediction is just gold. Both Paul and Vosh will uh, adjust their brains to make their previously wrong take right when they can. Both stubborn as hell. It's one of the reasons why a debate between the two of them is so fascinating to watch. Because in many respects, they're very similar. And I'm not to say that I don't have my own stubborn streak, but wow, those guys. <laughs> Paul is way more mature. Well, Paul is way older. <laughs> I mean, Paul should be more mature. He's been around longer. I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that part. <laughs> I don't know. The last debate I saw, I don't, I don't know about that. I also don't know how mature Paul really is at the end of the day. I think Paul has maturity. But, you know, he, 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 I, I honestly love the immature side of Paul more than I, I love the mature side of Paul. That's also fair, too. I love the, the Paul that laughs at... Yeah, F also, I should be clear. I'm joking around a little bit. But honestly, I mean, I don't know Paul's ego's content that well. I think I've seen, like, two things or three things that he's been in total. And uh, I don't want to be too judgmental based on that. It's totally possible he got heated in that debate. It was a super heated debate. Maybe he lost his cool. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I feel like that conversation got very bloody. And I don't usually, a bloody conversation is not usually like, I feel like it doesn't, like a bloody conversation doesn't register on the maturity scale. It's a different, uh, you know, it's, it's often very immature, but also it's often just like, it's sort of like, okay, we're at the throwing blows portion. It's like, it's like neither mature nor immature. It's two people just going at it. Yeah. Fart jokes and, uh, you know, gets a fucking, you know, devious gleam in his eye as he <laughs> Everybody's asking for the laugh. I know, but the timing's got to be right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking makes fun of me for something I fucking said or did, right? That's that's a cool Paul. Paul's always able to make me laugh at myself, which is a very valuable thing to have in a friend, I think. If you have a friend that can make you laugh at your own shit, that's always a valuable thing because it keeps you from being too filled with hubris. Maybe what Vosh really needs is that That's a good that's a good that's a good statement. It is true, you know. It is very good to have somebody who can make you, you know, who can, who can, you know, deflate you a little bit. Having people who can do that is really good and very healthy. That friend. Vosh needs that friend that makes him see the absurdity of himself sometimes. Because I think that one of the biggest problems he has at this point is he's blind to his own absurdity. And no one should be blind to their own absurdity because everyone is absurd. Paul is bad at debates because he can't contain his emotions. I mean, this is just a very different style of argumentation because, you know, Paul and I come from a different era of YouTube when overt displays of emotion won you the debate. That was what was in. Being extraordinarily passionate and loud and vocal and forceful with your arguments was seen as a positive attribute. Things have changed, but Paul ain't changed. You think Vosh got too big too quickly? No. I'm honestly surprised he's not bigger than he is. Maybe if he um, exhibited some of the traits I'm talking about, he would be. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's getting way more views than my ass, so what would I know? Debates are kind of dumb, to be honest. My problem with debates is that they are inherently bad. TJ, TJ doesn't get as many views as Vosh, but one of the things that I will say, and, you know... Uh, that TJ has crazy staying power. And I think I respect that a lot. Um, the fact that TJ has been doing this for years and has completely changed his presentation style, completely and utterly changed um, over that time and yet still maintains a steady community, a active community um, is like really, really cool. And it's something that I think that people should recognize more um, online.
there is a amnesiatic like character to uh uh to online the online world sometimes where it's like people like you know people move on to the next hottest thing and then some people for a lot of people the whatever's hot now is the only thing that exists but um as you know tj's kind of the fact that we're reacting to tj right now kind of proves no actually like the the hot thing right now isn't the only thing happening at all um and that's not to say that vosh doesn't have staying power either vosh has been killing this shit for a while now i think that vosh does um have the ability to keep going strong um as well but i i just think that we should recognize it when it's the case you know um tj's been going at this for a long time he's made crazy changes to his platform he's made crazy changes to his approach to content creation to what he you know even to his political opinions and yet still is going strong and i think that says something it speaks to uh, a certain knowledge and also a certain ability to foster a community which is pretty cool yeah I think so, yeah, Killjoy. Killjoy says, TJ is older than Markiplier. Like, TJ's been around since before YouTube was even monetized. Yeah, I believe so. If I remember correctly, TJ's channel started, yeah, before monetization happened. Um, and he's still going strong. Like, his channel is still thriving. It's not just, it's not just floating there either. It's thriving. Like, he's doing things that are bringing new people to his community, which is pretty amazing, you know? So has Paul's ego... Uh, I don't know. I don't know the history of Paul's ego so well, but also that's also respectable to be able to keep going for that long and also keep things fresh and whatever is it's not easy. And you can see this. There are there are people who are still technically making content like people who've been around for a long time and are making content still, but that the love is gone, you know, and their their community has like a dead feeling around it. And I don't get that feeling around TJ at all. Um, I think his community is, is like, it's still vibrant, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let's continue. Bad faith. So we talk about, oh, you're bad faith, you're bad faith. Both parties in any debate are bad faith because neither one of them is there to honestly evaluate an issue. They're both there to win a victory for their ideology. And that inherently means that they're not really truly willing to change in the course of the debate. And if a person's not really willing to change yeah. their mind, then they're not being open-minded. And if they're not being open-minded, then they're certainly not being charitable. And so he is, he is right about this to a certain degree. This is something I've talked about a million times about the debate scene online and online debates is that it's always two people firing at, at, they're firing at each other, but they're they're basically they're in truth they're aiming at the respective audiences. The goal is to try and uh, present yourself in a certain way to another audience. There is a certain level of bad faith that is present in all four show debates. There's almost no way around that. Um, it's why if you want like a a true debate that is actually between two people, will often online will more take the shape of a discussion as opposed to a debate as we understand it. And uh, that's just because like you have to be able to diffuse the ego. There has to be, uh, the both of the audiences have to be there with the understanding that this is for the purpose of like growth and not like to draw battle lines over a hot take or whatever, or whichever, whoever's take is more correct. Yeah, he, he's got a point to a certain degree on this for sure. So they're inherently arguing in bad faith. So, when you tell me that such and such had a bad faith debate, I say that's a redundancy. All debates are bad faith. And that's why I don't put much uh, stock in them as anything more than just entertainment. I think debates can that's be fair. somewhat valuable to the people listening to them if you have two interesting you know, intellectual perspectives um, that are being adversarial towards one another. But in real human dialogue, there should be open-mindedness. There should be charitability. There should be an attempt to understand the other person. And you don't get that in debates. And so maybe it's a good tool to understand the subject, but it's a really bad tool to understand human interaction. That might be a bit reductive. It might be. I don't know. I'll have to think about that.
The debate is for the audience unless you personally debate with an open mind. Yeah, the debate is for the audience, like I said, but it's for the audience's entertainment and maybe their information. But it creates an adversarial tone in our discourse that I don't think is typically very productive. And um, I think a lot of the reason why so many issues are so deeply gridlocked is because everyone views everything in terms of adversarialism. And this goes right down to the foundation of our country. I mean, our country was founded by essentially lawyers. And how do lawyers come to the truth? You know, two sides take different positions and battle it out. And then another group decides the truth. Like trials are really just debates. Yeah. And our entire system is created by these people. So adversarialism is kind of baked in. That's why you have... Democrat versus Republican, issue versus issue, good versus evil. Everyone wants to split it down the middle um, a name dropped in and the chat. say this side and that side. And um, I'm more of a fan of the idea that things are a gradient and there is no simple way to split things down the middle. Why do people have so much hate for Demon Mama? Demon Mama mentioned? Demon Mama reference? Um, people have hate for Demon Mama because she's a confident trans woman. True, and though! That's, that th thank you! Fucking thank you! That's fucking true! Look, I'll be completely real. There are some people who have legitimate problems with me, but... And I'm not... I'm, I, I know I'm saying this being very cognizant of the fact that I just talked about the, you know, haters and losers problem of just writing off your critics. But guys, for fuck's sake, how many times on this stream have you witnessed me open the doors for criticism only for it to be a absolute ocean of literal bullshit, okay? I, I have opened the doors wide open for people to criticize me and in two degrees I should have never done that I realized now was inviting pain upon myself for no reason. There are just some people who fucking hate me for that reason. They really just, I mean, you can see it in my shorts. When I do a short and I make a joke, the people who come in seethingly mad screaming about, uh, about f screaming transphobia because I made a joke in a short is like crazy. It's crazy how much people just can't get over that. Anyway, let's continue. Threatening? I think that's usually it. Um, there's probably other people who hate her for other reasons. Um, I think that's why most people that hate her, hate her. You're 100% right, TJ. I think life is just bad faith because we're looking for meaning in a meaningless universe. Look up Sartine bad faith. Uh, Satrian. Sartrian bad faith? Yeah. Deeply concerned says, I don't know what problems people have with Demon Mom besides when Vosh and her argued about DIY hormones. We weren't even arguing about DIY hormones. That wasn't even, um, uh, that wasn't even about DIY hormones, but but yeah, um, there are some people who have like um, legitimate quote unquote problems with me. Um, there are people who sort of deeply disagree with me on certain trans issues. Um, and I think that they have like a more legitimate stance than just like, cause you know, they don't just hate me because I'm a confident trans person. They hate me because I have the wrong take on trans people. I think that's more legitimate than just hating me based on my identity. Um, there are people who have, um, who basically believe that, um, you know, be who, who have what I would say is like, um, oh yeah, there's people who don't like me because they think I'm too liberal, um, which I think is a more legitimate position than, than pe just hating me based on my identity. Like people who don't like me because I tell people that you should probably it's probably worth voting for Biden, even though he's a giant piece of shit. Um, you know, uh, that's a more legitimate reason people don't like me, but that's not the majority. The majority of people who don't like me have a huge problem with my tone. They're super, they, they fixate on it. Oh my God. If you guys could see the comments that I get, um, they fixate on the way that I comport myself, uh, and in ways that are totally uneven. The perfect example of this is if you watch some of my old debates, um, and you read the comments, the negative comments on my old debates, 
I will be in a debate with someone who's screaming and calling me an idiot and saying all kinds of things, and they will say, you are so uncivil. You are just, you are just so fucking uncivil. It's unbelievable. You're such a loudmouth asshole. And I'm like, did you not see the other guy doing the exact fucking same thing? It's, it's crazy. The, the, that, that thing. There's a huge pool of people who just don't like that I will meet them on the ground that they're at. That I will engage with someone with the same level of, of heat that they'll engage with me. If someone comes in swinging, I'm going to swing right back. And people find that unacceptable. Because I'm not the type of person who's allowed to do that. It's not seen as cool by some people with a certain worldview when I do that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the idea that I'm 100% right. I used to like that idea. <laughs> Let's say I'm 99% right. I just don't like her content. Sure, but not liking someone's content and hating them as a person are two vastly different things, or at least they also should be. Also true. Also true. If I click on a video and I see a person delivering, you know, the, the message and I don't like their voice or I don't like the argument they made or I find them too superficial or too ponderous or whatever the case may be, I simply don't watch that person. Um, I don't say to myself, I hate that person and I'm going to be obsessed with them now. <laughs> I just go, oh, that's the same for me and move on with life. I think your channel has improved over the last year or two. One thing I don't get about the content strategy of Demon Mama. Oh, here we go. Is why Demon Mama does not ever put out any sort of like short form content whatsoever. It's always extraordinarily long streams or extraordinarily long clips from those streams that are almost as long as the streams themselves. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, he's right though. I know he's right. I, it's funny. I actually, we just, I just talked to him about this in private and DMS. Okay. So this makes sense. So all checks out. It all checks out. <sighs> he he does have me there. I am trying to change it though, legitimately. I'm, I'm actually I am actually trying to change that. Um, it's all I want to talk about why, but I want to hear the rest of his critique first. And I obviously there's an audience for that, but like, why no five minute content? Why no? 15 minute content. Why no 20 minute content? Why does everything have to be so fucking long? It just seems like you're very much Ooh. limiting the scope of your own audience at that point by not having some more digestible segments that could get people's foot in the door. Uh, I don't really understand it personally. I know that this is the day and the age of the streamer and that people like long form content and everyone's got their favorite voice they listen to. But I think it's also important to put out stuff for the people who don't want to commit to watching something that's three hours. Brevity is the soul of wit. Yeah, but I don't know that wit is what Demon Mama is going, through, going for. I mean, when I've seen her content, it's primarily been deep dives into things. Hey, thank you. It's primarily been Demon Mama delving into a subject as as thoroughly as she possibly can and she's very good at it and um and that's good and that's that's all well and fine and, and dandy but um surely there are some subjects that could she could address more quickly and make some shorter form content that would be more appealing to a casual viewer okay it's actually really funny that everyone in chat is responding there's so many people who are like no no we need it to be long ah but i know and i know i know that i've done that for time i've i've un, un, unfortunately i've perhaps overtrained the audience to like long form content i know that it's true when i put out a 20 and and, and i went and after after i heard of this critique because i did see this part of the video after i heard of this part of the critique um i went and looked through and i, I have actually put out some 15 to 20 minute content quite a bit in the last few months not not all that often but um and it the videos don't do as good you guys don't watch them as much 
But um, I, I, I talked to, to TJ and I also talked to my partner Doe about this. And uh, they both ba they both made the exact same point, which is basically like, you just got to put it out there because it will bring other people other than your core audience. Everything can't only be for the core audience or else, like, like, I don't know, or else, or else it will, you know, it'll, it'll only be like new people won't be coming in. And I do want to do shorter content. It does make my workload easier if I can remember to do it. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about this. I want to hear the rest of what he has to say here first, and then I'll talk about why I end up doing so much longer form content. There's a few reasons why, but let's, let's hear what he has to say. And I just don't get why she doesn't do that. I don't know if it's because it has not occurred to her to do that or if she's thought of it and then dismissed the idea and said, that's just not for me. Or maybe she doesn't want that more casual audience. Maybe she specifically only wants her audience to be filled with people who are willing to sit there and listen to her for an extended duration. And so maybe it's a way of weeding out people who are maybe too casual for her tastes. I don't know. I don't know what her reasoning is. I mean, I do like that. I do encourage, I do like encouraging an audience that is more willing to engage with, with deeper thought. Uh, that that will probably never change about my channel. Um, I I like my core audience being people who are willing to think about things, who are willing to hear my like hear my full thoughts about something. I just I like that. I like being able to talk deeply about a subject and have people tune in and listen. So there is he's right. He got me on that one. That is that is a part of it. It's not that I'm like weeding out people who are too casual necessarily. It's just that I I don't want to. I would prefer to encourage a core audience of people who are willing to actually hear me out in full um, and not just people who want to hear my quick hot take for like personal validation or something like that. Um, but I do think that I go too far and I think he does have a very good criticism here. Um, I do, yeah. But it's it does baffle me. Just describe what I don't like and can't get into. God forbid... That eight hour long stream was terrible take like the one you've discussed. Um, I don't remember. The only take of Demon Mamas I remember discussing recently was that Trump is worse than George W. Bush, which I do not agree with. And I think it's Fair. hard to justify. I don't think it's hard to justify, but I'll prove myself on Friday. For those of you who are watching this as a video, what, keep an eye out for when I go on their podcast because I'm going on TJ's podcast on Friday when this is being recorded. Also, if you're watching and enjoying this reaction to criticism of me and also some guy named Vosh, make sure that you slam that like button down below. The likes mean the world to me. And I would also love to have you subscribed. Uh, I do fully intend. I'm going to explain myself a little bit and respond to the criticism a little more here in a second, but I do fully intend to continue bringing both long form and learning much better how to do shorter form stuff in the coming days. So if that's interesting to you, press that subscribe button down below. Given the fact that George W. Bush led us into two disastrous and seemingly never ending wars, now, they have ended since, but they went on for quite some time and cost a lot of lives, a lot of money, and didn't really seem to accomplish much of anything. And um, so what did he buy with American blood? As far as I could tell, not much. So uh, he will always be worse in my eyes than Trump, who at least never did that. All right, I'm thinking that we're going to actually watch this video afterwards. We're going to do a TJ double feature today because I'm really interested in this. I actually really want to do that. We're going to do a double feature. So. But first, I got to finish this. So um, I think TJ nailed, nailed me. I think he got me. It's true. I have a, a problem. I have a deep problem, uh, which is that I do not do enough short form content. Um, and uh, it actually, I, it's something I feel kind of bad about. Um, and, uh, and there's a couple of reasons why I find myself in this place.
um, obviously the one I already said, which is that I do generally like to encourage my core audience to be people who are willing to hear me out in full. However, um, I am also long-winded generally. Uh, it's just my style, but I have gotten a little bit worse about it over time for a couple of reasons. Um, I like to work my way through things. Uh, and it's not always the best way of presenting something. And I recognize that it turns off some people who would otherwise be totally in to my content and what I have to say. And I want to work on that. I want to get better about that. I, uh, am approaching this with as much humility as I can muster. Um, I'm proud of the stuff that I make, but also I think I can get better. And I do think that uh, learning to be a little bit more succinct with certain things that I'm talking about would be very valuable. Another reason uh, why I have leaned so hard into long form content is another, it's another personal reason and it's something that I know that I need to overcome, um, which is, yo, Amazing Atheist, TJ, thank you so much with the unbelievably generous $50. Feel free to spend it on drugs. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. And we're going to, uh, thank you. That's really kind of you. Um, I'm going to read through all the donos, but I caught that one and I wanted to thank you. And also welcome to earth for the t nearly as generous or perhaps more, depending on which standard of generosity we're going through. Who knows? $25. Welcome to Earth. Thank you so much. How do we keep talking about Metal Gear but not mention any uh, snake dummy thick memes? All right. We'll maybe check out that meme in just a minute. In fact, I'll put it on the meme list. Thank you both so very much. That's very kind of you. And uh, TJ, thank you so much for listening and hearing me out here. Um, and thank you for criticizing me in a very productive way. And it, it, it an extremely productive way. Um, so, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a tendency that I, uh, have fallen into, um, uh, uh, over the course of my streaming career. And I, and again, I want to state this very clearly. I acknowledge this as a weakness. I'm not saying that, uh, it has its reasons, but it is a weakness. And that is that um, as a result of the type of shit that I was engaging with for the first, I don't know, two years of my content, um, I over, uh, uh, I, I overly, I'm, I'm too much of a perfectionist when it comes to uh, my arguments and what I'm trying to say being presented. And it leads to me, um, wasting time and also it makes me feel bad because uh the basic thing is like there was this period of time where every single time i said anything there would be a hundred people um j just ready to fucking jump on it and misrepresent it in the most ridiculous way possible you guys saw this uh if you're new to my community you're just gonna you can either go dive into the old lore my old content and see it for yourself, or you can just take my word for it. Your, your, you know, it's up to you. But uh, there was this period where it was legitimately insane. I couldn't say anything without people like stretching it so far out of its, um, out of what was meant to be said that it became absurd. And it, it felt like, um, it felt like being gaslit at large by the internet. Um, and I think to a certain degree it was. Um, you know, this, this experience of just like reality denial where I'm like, how did you come to that conclusion? That's not what I fucking said at all. And it wasn't just random commenters. You know, it's not just, um, it's not just like, this wasn't just a, like, it's not like I was getting overwhelmed by YouTube comments. Idiots say all kinds of things in YouTube comments. Um, but it was other content creators. There was like an army of content creators who were just waiting at any moment, anytime I said anything to jump on any perceived mistake or even invent them. And it, it led me towards this style of basically being like, I need every I dotted and every T crossed. Um, I need to present my case and make sure that people are seeing everything. And if I don't feel like they are, then I'm not moving on from it. I'm gonna reiterate it or I'll restate it or I'll make it clear. And that's a problem. 
because it actually undermines my ability to present my content confidently and succinctly. And um, it's helpful in some regards. I've been able to channel it towards good things. For example, the Drama Mama series is basically that, but channeled in a good way. But the downside is when I do things like um, doubting myself or doing a preamble where I'm like, um, I'm like over explaining myself. Um, and it makes me feel bad because I know that I'm doing it. And, uh, but I also, it feels like, uh, like I said, it's like I don't even realize I'm doing it until it's too late. So I want to get better about that uh, over time. And also I want to feel more confident. I've mentioned this, um, I think I mentioned this in my Grand Gardener video. Um, if not, I know I mentioned it in my 2023, you know, year in review that like, uh, I felt like uh, one of the things that I've lost from when I was first started streaming was the ability to just sort of like fire up stream and have a good time and not worry that much, which is not the case anymore. I feel like I'm, uh, uh, I feel like I'm always watching myself, like, like, like triplicately watching myself when I'm streaming. I feel like not only am I here, but I'm also out there with you. And I'm also not just out there with you. I'm also in a, in a producer room watching how I'm going to turn this into a video later. And then I'm also out there in a PR room thinking, oh, well, how is this going to be taken? And it's, um, it, I don't like it. I don't like that. It, it makes me feel like I care too much about other people, what other people think. And in a certain way, I do. And I don't like that. I never have been, um, I've never been like that. But again, also for most of my life, um, like what the, the consequences of what other people thought was contextualized very differently. When I started doing this, um, other, other, like the, the, the way that my message gets twisted was weaponized in such a way or it, or it contextualized itself in such a way that I grew disgusted with it. And in a certain way, it's made me self-conscious, uh, which reflects in my inability to, to fucking do short form content easily. So I need to like, I need to, I need to learn how to overcome that. And I'm going to, I promise I'm going to overcome it. Uh, this is not going to be one of those short segments. And I don't want, I never want to get to the point where all I'm doing is short segments. I want to be able to have my casual, um, my, what's casual for me, my style of like talking through things very present in my content, but it already is. I have enough of that. I need to learn how to train myself to do those short form things and I'm gonna. So I do actually really appreciate the feedback. And also I wanna say, TJ also talked to me about this in private in DMs and gave me some really good advice. So um, thanks for that. I, it means the world to me. This is the type of criti criticism that I actually super, super appreciate. Um, and uh, I'm gonna take it to heart. And, uh, and it's good for you all too. Um, because I would love to see this community grow more. And I do recognize that if I get some shorter stuff out there, I know a lot more people will tune in. Um, and I'm sure they'll even tune in for the long form stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, there wasn't a whole lot else for me to latch on to with regard to the Vosh criticisms, because I don't know. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, some of the things I think TJ's onto some things, um, though I also feel like I, I've been guilty of those things as well. And I don't want to be too harsh on um, on Vosh, um, it, you know, because I don't really have any like up like standing beef with Vosh. I've heard about his drug take, and I want to go look at it um, because that's why I want to do this double feature. We're gonna watch this other one because I want to hear it and I want to see what people have to say about it. Um, but uh, one thing I have noticed about Vosh uh, recently is I've noticed that he's been um, incredibly, like he's been engaged in like what feels like, and this is just from my perspective, having tuned into his streams recently, it feels like he's engaged in a fight for his life against his audience right now. And that it, it kind of like, I, it sounds like it's terrible to go through. When I pop into chat and he's pissed as shit at chat 
like that's if i saw that once or, or twice i would be like oh you know some idiot said something funny in chat and now it's turned into a segment you know that happens how many times have i gone off on somebody in chat and then it's become a funny segment um but it feels like it's every single time i can't think of a time that i've tuned into his stream recently that he wasn't engaged in like a a throwdown with with chat and uh that it doesn't seem fun at the moment and to a certain i've mentioned this myself on multiple occasions that like i feel like his chat has gotten really really um like um antagonistic but i i but also like there is a certain degree where you have to go okay like this behavior is being encouraged you know like if you engage with with every combative person in chat you're going to encourage more people to do that because they're going to like the attention people are going to know that they can get under your skin and get you to yell about it and it doesn't always make for good content not every dumbass in chat makes for for like a good time and also if you're not having fun with it that's the most important part at all a part of all in my opinion because it will show, you know? Like, um, I don't know. Like, if I'm going to get in an argument with somebody in chat, I want to make sure I'm at least having an okay time with it, you know? Obviously, there's a time and a place to be like, fuck you, I'm throwing down. You know, like, I mean, remember when I got mad at actual Jake about his stupid bullshit that he said on fucking Twitter? Um, that was me getting, like, mad about somebody being an asshole. But I had fun saying that part. Like, I had fun making my response to him being an asshole. The whole incident, I wish he hadn't been an asshole, obviously, but I was still having fun making it. And I do think that sometimes I wonder if, like, there's a combativeness that's been, that's getting stuck in. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, this is not to say that I think, like, like, this is not to say that I think that, like, uh, like, he's, like, super irresponsible or platforming idiots in his audience or anything like that because again i can sympathize with it i i thought about this the other day um when i popped into his chat to you know i like to, i do this all the time you know you guys probably see me around i pop into multiple chats um but i pop in there a lot because i don't know i've always been a part of that community and um it's just another argument with chat and i was like damn i i started thinking about it from my perspective i'm like man that would make me feel horrible like, if I logged on every day and there was just a line of people looking to try and trigger me to get me pissed off so that I'd be, so I'd yell at them and give them attention in chat, I wouldn't want to stream, you know? Uh, I don't know. I, it would make me, it would make me very, very pissed off. I would, I would feel bad about streaming, you know? There's a lot of dumbasses that show up in chat and sometimes you got to ignore them. Sometimes you got to blast them out. Sometimes you got to... Sometimes you do engage with them, but I've, I've felt like I've seen that a lot. And I will say that, like, I imagine there's an incentive to it, right? Like, um, like I said, talking about the, um, talking about the, the hot take economy, uh, one thing that does do really well is blowing up at a chatter, um, you know, over like a hot take, you know, it basically, you give your hot take and then the, the chatter gets mad. You get to engage in that exact thing that I was describing before, where it's like, uh, look at, look at, I said this totally reasonable thing. And then this fucking idiot in my chat was so stupid that he couldn't see that I was right. That's a com comical cartoonish version. Uh, but, but like that type of thing is like, there's an incentive for that because to a certain degree, it will make for a certain type of content that does well on YouTube. Like, there is, like, a, a market for people who like to see some dumb guy getting yelled at. But I don't know if it's, like, sustainable in the long run. And I, don't, and, and it, and it, I imagine it takes its toll. So. Anonymous Platypus says, People also seem to like pissing him off because of parasociality. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, there's a parasocial as aspect there, for sure. That's just like, um, that's just, you know, I want attention. So I'm going to say something that gets me yelled at. And you look at that. I have the ability to get my name shouted out on a stream. It's a parasocial thing for sure. Um, well, okay. Little Morphine Annie says, chat likes to get especially pissy when Vosh gives a take, like maybe try improving your social skills even a little bit. 
Well, there's, a, yeah, I, of course, because there is that aspect of like, people are always going to look for a way to try to get in. They're going to look for any, they're going to try and twist your words in whatever way. And to a certain degree, um, that's always going to be present. There's always people in my chat who completely are just like pissed off. They're mad that day. They don't like what I'm saying. They're going to mischaracterize it. But you got to be careful how often you engage with it, especially at Vosh's size. Vosh's streams are pulling in like, seven to eight thousand concurrent live viewers the chance of you having some pissed off asshole who's going to twist your words in the wrong direction is like the likelihood of that happening is like a hundred percent every day that you turn on your stream and if you also um incentivize that then there'll be that you know then you're going to get you know multiple that you're going to get multiple people coming in and trying to twist your words in the most obnoxious way possible to try and get your uh, attention and uh and i think you got to be careful about that i think it's something you have to do like i mean to compare to somebody else completely hassan hassan is sort of notorious uh like one of his one of the things i've seen I've criticized him the most for is him having a chat with, you know, 50,000 people in it and one person says something stupid and then he fucking blows up on that person, sometimes completely misunderstanding what they were even saying. Like the time he blew up on that um, cat boy or whatever and then uh, said some really weird things to some random cat boy who he had misunderstood. Like you have to, it's just a skill, like it's just something you have to do. And the better that you get at it, you know, this is not me like, you know, this is me talking to the audience. Uh, you know, the better you get at it as a streamer, the more, uh, the better relationship you'll build with your chat. Streamers have to always think about their chat relationship. And uh, I don't envy Vosh's position right now because it does seem like his audience is already very interested in picking fights with him. Um, but I, I wonder if maybe the time has come for him to, 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 to cut down on those engagements in the name of, you know, better, a better, a show that, a show that makes him feel better or whatever. I don't know. Maybe he enjoys it. Maybe he's fully enjoying it, but that's not the feeling that I've got when I've been in there. I wouldn't enjoy it. That's for sure. No, I didn't see that Killjoy. That's kind of, kind of crazy. Amazing Atheist says, it seems to me, wait, hold on a second. I got to give you a fancy name. TJ, I got to give you a fancy name. Hold on a second. Let me give you a fancy name. How do we not have you a fancy name already? I feel like you've been here before. I'll get you a fancy name. Give me just a second. Oh, okay. Because you had another account. Okay. All right, let me give you the fancy one. Bam. There you go. Fancy name. There we go. Amazing Atheist says, It seems to me that Vosh often gets mad at chatters for rather innocuous remarks. It's like he's frustrated with them for merely asking a clarifying question or pushing back even in the smallest way. Obviously, there are also instances where a chatter is being very annoying, but often it's stuff that's pretty banal and not worth getting upset over. Yeah, I think I can see that too. And I, I think that the... Um, I, I think the um I, I think that there's a there's a there's like a, a knock on effect, right? Where when you're live streaming, you might see an innocuous comment. Uh you might see like a bunch of while you're talking about something, you're on a tear, you're talking about something, you might see a bunch of dumb things, and then afterwards the dumb things are off your screen, buried in the chat, and then someone says something fairly innocuous, but that's in the realm of those annoying things that you saw flying through the stream while you were on a tear or whatever. And then that person becomes like the lightning rod for all of the frustration. Um and I think also it can happen in another form where it's like, if you're talking about like a Twitter discourse that drove you fucking crazy and then someone comes in like, um, someone comes in like replicating that. But I do also think there's a possibility that like, um, you know, uh, there's just a general uh, oversensitivity effect that happens. And I, I can, I can, again, I can sympathize with that because if I logged on every day and there were like 10 people in my chat constantly fucking trying to piss me off or, or criticize me or whatever, 
Vosh's community has had some really weird conflicts with other creators that has led to him having a lot of hate watchers. And I think hate watchers are like the worst because they can poison the entire relationship with chat. Um, and this is something that you have to be careful of as a streamer generally, which is that like you have to remember that your chat is a bunch of random people. It's not actually a single entity. I have seen very large streamers who treat their chat like they're basically, it's like a single mind. You know, like there is a chat that you are talking to a single person. But in reality, it's a ton of different people. And if you're primed to, uh, if you're primed to, to like, you know, uh, uh, you know, for whatever reason, it could be a hundred different reasons why it's happened. But if you get to the point where you see any, criticism in, in chat as representative of the whole chat being against you, I can imagine that basically triggering like a, an extreme frustration and the desire to like correct the chat immediately. Like, oh, an idiot in chat, chat an idiot in chat becomes chat is being idiotic becomes I need to correct this because this is my chat that I have to deal with every day. If that makes sense. I think, I think, um, I think that's something that can really um that can actually happen where it's just like uh you you person over personify the chat and therefore any critique that's in the chat is perceived as your chat being against you when in reality there might be 10,000 people in there and one of them might be against you or there might be 10,000 people in there and 25% of them disagree with you on on fair terms 50% of them are fine and 25% of them are uh 25 50% agree with you 100% and 25% are being assholes. It's it's really tough. And I I think it's something that can I think it can lead to let's just say I think it can lead you to being worse at what you're doing than uh than if it, than than if you just ignored the chat in the first place completely negativity bias yeah that's that's a that's the smarty pants word for it yeah chat isn't a monolith but also like uh there's a psychological effect right like you guys uh chat collectively is our living you know and the chat can be a precursor to large events in a uh, in a streamer's life, in a creator's life. So while chat isn't a monolith, like it represents a certain monolithic force. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say on this particular topic. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you're subscribed down below and press like. Uh, we are going to now, I'm going to read some donations real quick, and then we're going to do a TJ double feature because I want to hear what TJ had to say about Vosh's drug takes. Because since we're on the topic anyway, I feel like I probably have a bunch to say on that. 